What's going on guys and welcome back to Pokemon Arcade. My name is Jordan and today we're going over everything you need to know about shiny hunting Pokemon in Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield. Alright guys, so the first thing we're going to go over for shiny hunting in Pokemon Sword and Shield is your encounter method. It's the first of three methods we're going over today and we're going to go over what you can do to prepare for it before we actually get into it. So first of all, you're going to want an ability to catch a Pokemon pretty reliably. So you're probably going to want to have at least Ultra Balls, maybe some sort of type specific ball, if there is one for whatever it is you're shiny hunting. And you're also probably going to benefit from Quick Balls. What Quick Balls do is they have like a five or six times capture rate, something ridiculously high on the first turn. So if you encounter a shiny while you're doing this method, they're going to be very good to give you a chance to catch it right away without having to worry about damage at all. But if that doesn't work for you and you're going to have to damage a Pokemon, what you're probably going to want to do is catch yourself something like this Pangoro, which is a Pokemon that I don't want to swap. I want to go to check summary, a Pokemon that can learn fake out. Not fake out, false swipe. False swipe is a 40 base power physical move with 100% accuracy, but what it does is it always leaves a Pokemon at one HP, which is your best chance for catching a Pokemon, and you don't have to worry about KOing it. There are Pokemon that learn this naturally. I recommend checking Cerebi.net if you want to find a list of those, but you can also catch a Pokemon that you know can learn it and then come to the westmost Pokemon Center in Modestoke over here to the secondary market person. Click buy and they will sell you. I'm talking to the wrong one. <laughs> here we go. This guy. And he will sell you the false swipe TM for $10,000. And money's not too hard to come by in this game. But we will be having a watt farming guide that leads to a lot of money coming out soon if you're interested in that. So in my case, I have only done encounter hunting for Zigzagoon, Galarian Zigzagoon specifically, of course, over here on Route 3. So what you're going to want to do first is know your shiny odds. Your base shiny odds are going to be, let's check, 1 in 4096. And you're able to increase that with a shiny charm up to 1 in 1365. But you can also increase that using the following table that we'll go over now. You can find this table at Cerebi.net, but I'll post it right here. The shiny hunting rates go up as you increase the number of Pokemon that you have battled, which you can check here in the Pokedex. So let's go into my Pokedex and we will find Zigzagoon right here. And you can see that I have battled 150 Galarian Zigzagoons. Now what a battle is in terms of the Pokedex, I believe is both KOs and catches. It's definitely KOs though. So if you catch one and it doesn't go up, make sure to check check me on that, but I'm pretty darn sure it's both. But if you encounter something and run away from it, that does not count as a battle. You have to have completed the battle in some way. Trainer Pokemon can be KO'd as well. So you'll probably build up some amount of KOs as you move forward through the game. But as you can see from the chart, if you have battled 50 Pokemon, your chance of shinies go up 1.5%, 2% at 100, 2.5% at 200, 3% at 300, and 5% at 500 maxing out, which brings you to 1 in 682 as your chance without a shiny charm, and 1 in 512 with a shiny charm, so pretty decent odds. However, it is worth noting that there is believed, I'm going to pause before the Styro gets us, it is believed that there is a glitch in the system right now, unfortunately, so I recommend a method we're going to go over in a little bit called Masuda hunting, which involves breeding for your Pokemon. But, coming back to my outline here, we will do a quick example of this. We can use the Tyrogue, it's not a Zigzagoon, but it's a Tyrogue. So I am leading my party with Big Patters the Pangoro, and as you are KOing this Pokemon, you'll probably want to bring something in your party that's super effective against it. These are very weak for me, having completed the entire game in the Pokedex, but you'll probably want to bring something super effective to knock them out quickly if you're going for this method. And then when you find the shiny Pokemon that you so desire, you will be able to see it here, but not in the overworld, and you can click False Swipe on your very strong Pokemon, if we weren't faked out by this Tyrogue, he's getting cheeky with us, as they say in the UK. So if we use False Swipe on him, he will be left at exactly 1 HP, making him perfect to catch. I also recommend using that Quick Ball before you even worry about False Swipe, so if something crazy happens, or they have a recoil move, you don't have to worry about it. But guys, that there is how the encounter method works. Once again, I recommend trying out this next method that we're about to go over. See you in a second. 
All right, guys, so now we're going to go over the second method in this shiny hunting guide video for Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield, the Masuda method. The Masuda method has been around for a while and is named for Janucci Masuda, currently the director of this game, I believe. High up at Game Freak, he's the one responsible for putting this method of shiny breeding into Pokemon games. So what you're going to need for this at its most basic level is not the Pokedex. Sorry for the misclick. If you come over here, you're going to want yourself a Ditto and you're going to want it to be a foreign ditto. As you can see on my screen, I have a Spanish ditto. Shout out to my friend Abe for helping me obtain the Spanish ditto. And all you have to do after that is locate yourself one of these daycares. You have this daycare here in the wild area in Bridgefield. And you also have, you can see I'm right here, you also have over here on Route 5, the other Pokemon nursery. So once you've obtained the Pokemon you want to shiny hunt for in this foreign ditto, you bring them here, you talk to this person, and you tell them, I'd like to leave my Pokemon and put them in the daycare. It's as simple as that, at its most basic level, and then you just wait for eggs and hatch the eggs. Your normal odds, again, are 1 in 4,000... Hold on. 1 in 4,096. And with this method, you've increased automatically up to 1 in 683. It's 682 and some change, but we'll say 1 in 683, which is a very large jump. Later in the video, we'll go over how to get the shiny charm and where you can get the shiny charm, which will increase your odds even further to 1 in 512. And I don't know about you guys, but waiting on these eggs with these odds sounds a lot better to me than having to KO 500 Pokemon to get to the same odds. And on top of that, you have a chance that the game is currently bugged and it's not working. So the Masuda method is definitely going to be the way to go. Real quick, let's go over how to do shiny Gigantamax hunting, and then we'll go over some helpful tips for all sorts of shiny hunting, and I'll cover where those help specifically when we get to it. All right, guys, so now we're gonna go over a new method that has emerged using the date spam trick, which I will also be making a video for on this channel. And it'll probably already be up, but we'll do a quick refresher. And this is going to help you do shiny Gigantamax hunting. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to Cerebi.net and figure out which den is going to have your Gigantamax Pokemon you want to shiny hunt in its rare table. And then you will come to that den, clear it out, and you will want to do a hard save. Before you do this, you will also want to make sure you have a wishing piece, which you can get for 3,000 watts from any of the wild area trainers. Then... You will also want to turn off autosave, and you will want to come in here and turn your text speed on to slow. I'm actually going to turn mine to normal because I'm a little bit more used to this at this point. And you're going to want to save that, and I actually am very suspicious of this, so I'm actually going to go ahead and hard save right here as well. And then you're going to want to hit A, and it'll say, there doesn't seem to be anything in the den. Do you want to throw in a wishing piece? And you'll say yes. It'll then prompt you to save, and this is what's very important here. We're going to click A here. And before the next two lines of text finish, you will be able to see the color of the den. Let me make sure I know where my home button is. Playing with a different controller. You will be able to see the color of the den, and if it is one of the rare bit raid beams, that's the one you want. So don't worry about doing anything. You're good. Go ahead and hard save to make sure you keep that beam. If it's not, you're going to want to quickly hit home before that text finishes, hit X, and close your game, and reboot, and try again. I'm not actually going to go through the mechanics of this moving forward in this video because we've already had the other video but i am just doing this as a quick refresher so we'll give you one example you hit a here and i okay so i hit home to be careful but i actually got lucky and got this rare beam right here so then you're going to want to save again officially i'm on june 12 2019 it's obviously not june 12 2019 but we'll move on to that in a second so june 12th is going to be my day number one right now day one it's important what we're going to be talking about here is a four day cycle where what you're going to want to do is come in here and make sure you're offline for this, by the way. If you go to your Ycom, you can see that I have the connect to the internet box option. That means I'm on local wireless. You can also see here on my home screen that I have the little L next to my Wi-Fi that tells you I'm on local wireless. So you'll come in here and you'll want to hit invite others. And then you'll hit home and come to your settings and come to your system and make sure your date and time is turned off for synchronized via the internet and move one day forward and then hit home, go back into the game and hit quit. Now what this is going to do is because this is a semi online function is going to make your game think you're now on June 13th. So you're going to open it again. You'll collect another 2000 Watts if you're in the post game or 300 Watts before that, I believe. And this will be your day two. Then you'll want to do this one more time and 
not sleep. Don't sleep your console. I don't think that'll mess it up, but let's not hit any, have any misclicks here if we can help it. Go back in. We're now on June 14th. So this is our third day. Very important. And then we will do it one more time. You can see we're getting a different Mon every single day, and I'll go over why this is important in a second. We'll come down here one last time, and now we are on the fourth day, June 15th. We're going to get our fourth different Pokemon. Now, why is the fourth Pokemon important? Well, let me tell you guys real quick. So when we come in here, we're going to see we have another new Pokemon. I believe that is a Corsola, a Galarian Corsola, three-star raid. Cool. So the way raids work when you throw in a wishing piece is it basically creates a nearly infinite queue of how this is working for you, how which raid Pokemon you're gonna get, and it automatically determines their shininess value at this point. And somewhere in that queue, if a Pokemon's gonna be shiny, it's already shiny. However, only the first three Pokemon from your hard save and when you threw in the wishing piece are actually going to be set Pokemon. It only remembers three days. So right now, those first three Pokemon we saw are set. But this Galarian Corsola, if I re-rolled, if I, if I load back my save and go to the first day and rolled back to the fourth day without saving again, this could be a completely different Pokemon. But if it's going to be shiny, it's going to be shiny no matter what. So what you're going to want to do is roll forward to your fourth day, go in and click do not invite others and join a battle. We're joining with a Carcoal, so this is going to be a very, very bad time. But we'll load in, and that is not a shiny Galarian Corsola. You can tell if you know the color, but you can also tell because there were no sparkles. Even worse, we went in with the ditto. So what you're going to want to do at this point, and this is why your hard save is important, is you can go ahead and close out your game. You know it's not shiny. If it is shiny, congratulations, you're done. You've gotten what you want. But we'll load back into our game here. It's going to take a moment. And what you would do if you were shiny hunting specifically a Gigantamax Pokemon, but any Pokemon in that, in the rare encounter table of this den, is you would then come in, hold on, waiting for the load screen. All right, so then you would come in and we're back at the original Dublade. So you can tell if we invite others, we'll be able to do the same date spam trick. And what you wanna do is then roll, if you did not have a shiny Pokemon, you then want to come in and roll it one day forward. June 16th is now gonna be our day. And you're gonna to wanna to quit, which will cause it to roll forward again. We can recollect our watts and see that we once again have this four star Sableye. So what you're gonna to want to do here, sorry, that was the home button. I play with a pro controller when I record, but I play with a regular switch when I don't and it really throws me off, is you wanna come hard save again. So what this does is it now makes that Sableye that was on your second day, your new day one. You have reset your day one. So now if we were to roll forward two more days, that would be our original day four, but our new day three. Which means since it's a new day three, that Pokemon is now set to whatever Pokemon it has decided it is in the queue. But we already know it's not shiny because we already checked it with our previous day one. And we have a new day four that can be any Pokemon, but might be shiny. So what you'll do is you'll set a day one, roll to the fourth day, check and see if it's shiny, and if it is, congratulations, hard reset, go back, and you can have as many times to invite others, or catch it, your if you catch it yourself, the Pokemon will move on. But you can invite others and have them catch it for you and trade it to you, or just give them the shiny Pokemon, and you can do that as many times as you want for different shinies. Any Pokemon in that rare table can then be shiny when you go to that fourth day, and it could be a different one, including the five star, five star, 5% five star Gigantamax Pokemon. And that's how you know that that fourth spot will always be shiny. So as long as you keep rolling without resetting your day one to that spot for a Gigantamax Pokemon, you can basically farm as many of them as you want. But if you did not have a shiny, you'll just go back, move forward a day, hard save so that's your new day one, and go to your new day four and check it. And if it didn't work, rinse and repeat until you get a shiny Pokemon in that fourth spot. When you find that shiny Pokemon in your fourth spot, unless you know it is the Pokemon you specifically want, for instance, if that day four is the Gigantamax Pokemon, in this den it would be Gigantamax Gengar in Pokemon Shield or Gigantamax Machamp in Pokemon Sword. If you specifically want that Pokemon, you can hard reset and make that shiny fourth spot, now your shiny first spot, and the Pokemon will never change. And then you can keep inviting people, but if you want to farm a whole bunch of different shinies in that rare encounter table, keep it as your fourth day. It'll be annoying to re-roll to the fourth every time, but that's how you keep the variety. 
if I didn't explain that super great, make sure you go into the comments below and ask questions. I can definitely try to help. It is a very complicated process. Shout out to Austin John Blaze and Blaine's, I believe, or Blaine S. Uh, awesome Pokemon creators. Uh, Austin John Plays is a Nintendo creator, but they taught me this method and I wanted to share it with you guys. The important thing to note is that these Pokemon are going to have not perfect catch rates. So it might take people multiple tries to figure it out and they might change a whole lot, but it's going to be great. And the other thing to note is that because that fourth spot's not guaranteed to be shiny until you find that shiny fourth spot, if that makes sense. Uh, you have no idea where in your queue that shiny day is going to be. So you might have to roll 20 day or retry 20 times for 24 day fours, or you might have to do it 4,000 times since the odds are 4,000 because the shiny charm does not affect this method. But if you stick with it in a den you know has the Pokemon you want, you will eventually get it. However, for anything that's not Gigantamax, you probably don't want to do this method only because you can do the Masuda method or the encounter method. Even the encounter method at 500 encounters is probably going to be better than this one. But real quick, let's go over some things that are going to help you with most of the other shiny encounter. Eh. Real quick, let's go over things. Real quick, let's go over things that are going to help you with most of the other shiny hunting methods and see how easy we can make your life as you look for these slightly differently colored Pokemon. All right, everybody, so we're gonna go over some helpful hints to help you guys in your shiny hunting endeavors. Number one, we're gonna go over the shiny charm, but at the same time, we're also going to go over the oval charm because they're very similar and very close to each other in this town of Surchester. In this case, the shiny charm will help you with encounters and the Masuda method, and the oval charm will help you with the Masuda method, and then we'll talk about how to hatch your eggs faster if you're doing the Masuda method. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is if you're in Surchester, and you've become the champion for the oval charm and you have finished your pokedex meaning you've got all 400 pokemon registered in your pokedex for the shiny charm you'll come to this leftmost hotel and go inside and you'll want to go up to the second floor using this golden elevator here we go and then you'll be able to come over here and go into this first room and this gentleman right here will battle you if you become the champion and if you defeat him in a two on two format, he's Game Freaks Morimoto and he will give you the Oval Charm. And what the Oval Charm does is make it so you are a lot more likely to get eggs. I think it might be doubly likely to get eggs. So doing the Masuda method will go a lot faster for you. And if you've completed your Pokedex, you can come to this room and talk to this gentleman and he will give you a certificate of Pokedex completion and also give you the shiny charm, which will increase your base shiny odds from one in 4,096 to one in 1,365. Or if you're doing Masuda, one in 683 to one in 512. That's nothing to scoff at, and it makes a serious shiny hunter a lot more inclined to complete their Pokedex. So then we will go downstairs and outside to get ourselves a nice view as we talk about the other thing that could be helpful. If you're doing the Masuda method, you're going to want to have something that'll make your life as easy as possible in hatching all those eggs. If you can, if you guys want to see an example of how many eggs this might take, I am currently doing a Sobble hunt, and this is how many Sobbles I have. I actually released about a box worth of Sobbles, and then I have three more boxes of Sobbles built up, as well as these three boxes of eggs ready to go, and I still haven't found one. I did get lucky with one in my Shiny Ibidim hunt where I got 22 eggs, and that might not be that bad for you, but that's still gonna take you some time, especially if you're Shiny hunting a pseudo legendary with a long edge hatch rate. So in order to speed that up, you're gonna wanna have a Pokemon with either the Flame Body or Steam Engine ability in your party. In this case, I happen to have both, that does not help you to have two, by the way, but I just wanted to have both to give you an example. This Colossal, as you can see, has the Steam Engine ability, and it doesn't say anything about egg speed hatching increasing whenever you have it, but trust me, it does. And then this Carcoal also has Flame Body. There are several Pokemon that'll have this for you. Most notably are Roly Coley, Carcoal, Colossal, oh, what's the candle's name? Litwick. Lampent and Chandelure. In this game, you're gonna find it most easy to go over here to your map and fly to the Galar Mine number one. I believe it's just called Galar Mine though. Yeah, Galar Mine. Catch yourself a Roly Coley and see if it has this ability and if it doesn't, evolve it into Carcoal. Carcoal and Carcoal. 
Carcoal and Colossal can only have these two abilities. They can't have whatever third ability it is that Roly Coley's able to have. And that'll be a really easy way for you to get this. That'll double your hatching speed. And that'll be so helpful. You only hatch five eggs at a time, obviously, because one of your places is taken up in your party. But trust me, it's, it's worth it. Twice as fast, minus one egg per time. It definitely is worth it for you. And those are our helpful hints when it comes to this. Again, the shiny charm helps you with the Masuda method and the encounter method. The oval charm and flame body slash steam engine Pokemon help you with the Masuda method. So it also, while having the best odds and not being glitched, also has the most helpful things for you. And then of course you have shiny Gigantamax hunting, which is a little bit of a nightmare to be honest with you guys. It takes an unpredictable amount of time and who knows if you'll ever get it. But Watch out for friends who might have found one, because I have personally been able to get a couple myself, and it's a good way to go. So, real quick, let's go back to full cam, and we'll recap what we've done today, and wrap it up for you guys. Alright guys, so today we've gone over all three of the main methods of shiny hunting Pokemon you're probably concerned with in Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield, and some helpful hints that go along with them. Those methods, again, are the Encounter Method, the Masuda Method, and then how to shiny hunt. Gigantamax Pokemon in the most efficient way we currently know about as of December 23rd when I'm recording this. In addition to that, we've also gone over how the Shiny Charm helps you and where to get it, how the Oval Charm helps you and where to get it, and what sort of ability Pokemon you might be able to have help you when it comes to certain egg hatching related Shiny methods. If you guys are able to get any cool Shinies, make sure to let me know in the comments below. I hope this helped you guys out a lot. Make sure to smash that like button and subscribe for more guides and awesome Let's Play content. And I will catch you guys back here next time. Happy hunting. Peace.